Hi, I'm Gary Edelman, Chief Historian at the American Battlefield Trust, and this is History at Home. It's a lovely morning to talk about General and President Ulysses S. Grant, one of the least likely heroes in American history. In 1861, Grant was a practical failure. He had been drummed out of the army, he is working at his father's store, and yet, within three years, he'll be commanding the largest armies in the world, and in seven years, he'll be President of the United States. Grant was born in 1822, and his father, not really seeing Grant cut out for a particular career, managed to secure a spot for him at one of the best military schools in the world, the United States Military Academy at West Point. Grant was an okay student, nothing remarkable, but the key is when you put this guy on a battlefield, he suddenly was the right guy in the right place at the right time. Grant was a natural leader, possessed personal bravery. He was excellent on a horse. He could inspire his troops through his own personal leadership and a simple way of going at a task and completing that task. In the war with Mexico in the 1840s, Grant put himself in great personal danger, mounting a horse, riding on the side of that horse, and delivering ammunition to his soldiers. He's going to earn honorary promotions. But after that war was over, Grant in the peacetime army did not thrive. When there wasn't a whole lot going on in the army, with a war for instance, Grant didn't have a task to go after. He neglected his duty and was eventually forced out of the army in the 1850s. Grant tries to be a farmer, he fails at that. He's selling firewood on the streets, he's working in his father-in-law's shop by 1860, but this is the exact time when the country is being torn apart into what would become a four-year civil war, where the North fought the South, where the Yankees fought the rebels, where the Union soldiers fought the Confederate soldiers, and President Abraham Lincoln is looking for experienced officers. Here is Ulysses S. Grant's chance. Here he can do something he is good at. He becomes a colonel, quickly becomes a general, and he's shows that he can go at the enemy. He can take the fight to the enemy and he's going to achieve some key early victories, capturing key forts called Forts Henry and Fort Donelson, opening up Tennessee for the Northern soldiers. He scores a victory in April of 1862 at the Battle of Shiloh, by far the largest battle in American history up to that time. There are more than 20,000 casualties that's killed, wounded, captured, or missing. And then he's gonna follow it up with another victory in the middle of the Civil War at a place called Vicksburg a Confederate stronghold on the Mississippi River that effectively, when he captures it, cuts the Confederacy in two. And by this point in the Civil War, Abraham Lincoln has issued his Emancipation Proclamation. And what that means is if the Union wins victories, if the Union captures more Southern or Confederate territories, more slaves are freed. And Grant keeps on winning at places like Lookout Mountain and Missionary Ridge. And Abraham Lincoln knows he has found his general. He puts Grant in command of all of the Union armies. Those are the armies in Virginia, in um, Tennessee and in Georgia, and in and around Mississippi. So suddenly Grant has more soldiers under his command than anyone else in the world. Even while he was racking up win after win after win, his enemies would tell President Lincoln and put into the press that Grant was butchering his troops, that he drank way too much, that he didn't like Jewish people or Southern people or Native Americans. Of course, none of this turned out to be true. And Abraham Lincoln, as president, had a little bit more on his mind, you know, winning the Civil War. And he couldn't take his eye off the ball. And he needed leaders. He needed generals who would win. Grant simply used who he was to help win the Civil War. He didn't dress like the highfalutin general with brass and all sorts of bands all around him. He dressed like a regular soldier who happened to have the rank of a general on his shoulder. Um, he inspired his troops, he knew how to communicate with people, and he just kept pushing along until this thing would come to an end. Once Grant is in command of all of the Union Army, he travels with the largest one against the most dangerous Confederate opponent. You've heard of him, General Robert E. Lee. And there are a series of battles in terrible places called the Wilderness, uh, Spotsylvania, Cold Harbor, and Petersburg. And ultimately, over 10 months, Grant will wear Lee down. He will make him surrender at Appomattox. All the other Confederate soldiers surrender not long after that. And Grant is seen as the victor of the Civil War. In the end, Ulysses S. Grant's ordinary character traits made him extraordinary. It helped him to lead the Union to victory. It helped propel him to the presidency, which he held for eight years after the Civil War. 
Grant's presidency wasn't the best one America had ever seen, but nor was it the worst either. He did his best to unite the country in extraordinarily difficult times. After his presidency, Grant traveled the world, spreading goodwill about our country, still trying to unite this country and the world with us afterward. Sadly, Grant will develop cancer later in life. Uh, this is one foe he knew he could not beat ultimately, but he had one more thing to do. His family had very little money, and he entered into a contract to write his memoirs, to write a book about his life. He was a great writer, and he worked with a particularly famous writer you've probably heard of named Mark Twain, and Grant was writing and writing. Even after he lost the ability to speak, he kept writing, and he finished his memoirs just one week before he died, showing his dogged determination right up until the end. Coming from the most humble beginnings, facing every challenge that somebody could face, achieving great victory in a terrible war, uh, attaining the highest office of the land, uh, newspapers across the world, people across the world celebrated the incredible life of this ordinary American.